Uh oh. <laughs> I'm too old for this thing. You know what? Let me tell you something. Time. It is the most valuable asset that we have as content creators. But yet, it is the one that we seem to never have enough. We pour hours into editing, fine tuning every single detail, make sure that every frame is right, and often we lose sight of what actually matters. Creating content. Just imagine what we could achieve if we spend less time editing and more time filming, capturing the moment that we need to tell our story. And this is why the power of technology comes in. By using software, plugins, tools, we can make our editing workflow easier, faster, more efficient. Therefore, less time in post-production and more time creating content. And that's why I love the answer. Hey, what's up? If you're new here, my name is JD and I'm a filmmaker. For the past seven months, I've been using the answer for all my projects, my job, my business, client work, personal projects. The Enzo Pro is a color grading powerhouse that allows you not only to color grade your footage, but also to dial in the film look that you are looking for, and really, really, really fast. It works with Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. I use it with both Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. If you wanna watch the review that I made for Final Cut Pro, you can click somewhere or just see the first link in the description now for this one i want to talk about davinci resolve because i recently discovered something and that thing made me happy all right so we all know that resolve is a color grading piece. A lot of people are using DaVinci Resolve just because of what it can do. Now, before I show you what I recently discovered, I wanna tell you two things. The first thing is, this is pretty much the settings that I'm using on my color management tab. My color science is DaVinci White RGB, my timeline color space is DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, and my output color space is WEC 709A just because I'm using a Mac. The second thing, all the clips that you are seeing here are from Canon. I mostly film with Canon, so what I have here are Canon footage. Now, before loading the answer, we're gonna build our node tree. One thing I want you to know is the answer pro pretty much gives you a suggestion of node tree structure that you can use. But for me, I build my node tree and personally for what I'm doing, I think it's good. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. My node tree structure is pretty much as followed. My first node is for noise reduction. The second node is for color space transform. The third node is for white balance. And the fourth one, that's for my, you know, balancing, exposure, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna call it exposure. And the next one, I'm gonna call it HSL for any HSL modification that I wanna do. The next one, which is my sixth node, that's the one that I'm gonna use for the answer. And then I'm gonna have two parallel nodes. The reason why I have two parallel nodes, it's for masking. If I wanna do any mask on the subject and in the background, I can do it. And my last node is gonna be another CST. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build a color space transform. This is the part that I'm really excited about. We're gonna go to FX and drop our color space transform here. Now, the input color space is pretty much the camera that was used. That was Canon and the input gamma. This was filmed with the Canon R5, so therefore that was in C log 3. Then my output color space is gonna be Da Vinci white gamut and my output gamma Da Vinci intermediate and then from the second CST I'm gonna input Da Vinci white gamut to Rec 709 boom what I just did is all the modification that I'm gonna be doing inside of these two CST nodes will be in Da Vinci color space because we know that DaVinci Color Space gives us a lot of flexibility to push an image. And this is the secret sauce that the answer pretty much gives us. So if we go back from these two nodes, we have a CST. That image came from log C log 3 to Rec 709. And now we're gonna go to our the answer node. The first thing I do when I fire the answer, I turn off my field grain. I also turn off my print. Sometimes I do turn off 
the film. So for now, we're gonna disable it. In my input, I'm gonna go and select Da Vinci White Gamut Intermediate. Now, the enter allows me to work inside of Da Vinci White Gamut Intermediate. And we have the whole flexibility that that color space gives us. Okay, if you haven't used the enter, this is pretty much what it does. It gives you the possibility to choose from any film profile, any film stocks, and use also film print. You can give your footage any film look that you want or a natural look, depends on what you are doing. This clip was filmed from a documentary. So now we're gonna try to create it. The first thing we're gonna do is select our film. Now, when you when you click on film profile, you have more than 60 film profile that you can use. What I usually do, I start clicking on them, looking at different film profiles and see what they do. I've been using the answer since January. Right now we are in July. So I have an idea of all the film profiles that we have in this plugin. I know for this one, I want to go with Fuji, Fuji Natura 1600. After selecting my film, I'm going to select also my print. And for this one, I'm going to go with Kodak. From this already, I have an image that I love. The only thing that I have to do is tweak it and make it look good. So let's go back and we want to be able to see our waveform and I'm going to expand and pretty much play with it. I'm gonna also open film developer. I wanna have a little bit more saturation, so I'm gonna activate it and play with the color boost until I have something that I like. Nice. Um, on print, I'm also gonna activate analog range limiter. It helps me recover a little bit of my highlight. So, and then I'm gonna add my film grain. I don't want to have too much grain, so I'm going to go with the 35 ISO 50. One thing you need to know is the higher the ISO, the more grain that you have on your image. 35 ISO 50 is good, but I'm going to lower the amount so it can be subtle, like present and subtle around 7, 8. Let's do 8. Then we're going to add a little bit of bloom and a little bit of eyelation as well. Now. When it comes to eyelation, you need to know that it warms up your image. So I'm going to go back to my input and play with the temperature slider so I can remove a little bit of yellow. Next step, I'm going to play with my contrast boost just a tad and good. This is perfect. I love this image that was filmed actually in the Middle East. So it gives you that Middle East vibe. Now, since it's pretty much the same node tree structure that I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna create a still from that and go to our next image. I'm gonna apply this grade just so I can have the same node tree structure. We're gonna reset this. This was what filmed on the Canon R5C on c 3 So my input color space is already good. I'm not gonna change that. I'm gonna go straight to the answer and try to tweak the colors the way that I want it. So first thing, DaVinci White Gamut, I'm gonna deactivate my film grain and then I'm gonna choose my film profile. Like I told you, I'm already used to the film profile so I know for this one I wanna go with Kodak. I'll do Kodak Vision 50D. And then afterwards, we're gonna select our print which is going to be Fuji. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of color so we're gonna boost the color until I have something that I'm happy with. That's great actually. I want to play with the colors just a little bit. The sky is really beautiful but I want to saturate it a little bit more. So we're going to select our sky and desaturate it. And the second thing I want to do is I love when my subjects have pinkish skin tone. So I'm going to boost my saturation a little bit more and go on my U versus U and boost the skin tone a little bit so my skin tone can be a, a tiny bit pinkish. This is beautiful. Really, really, really beautiful. All right, next clip. Don't forget, same thing. We're gonna apply our grade so we can keep the same node structure. One tip of advice, you can grab a steel into your power grade. From this, you'll be able to use the same node structure on any project. All right, we're gonna go to our CST. This one was filmed in the Canon C200 with c 2 And we're gonna go to the answer and we're gonna go select a film profile. After the film profile, I'm gonna go select the film print. And then afterwards, I'm gonna play with my 
blacks and white then boost my color a little bit more until I have an image that I'm really satisfied with good and then I'm going to my exposure tab and I'm gonna add a little bit of exposure on my midtones and I'm going to my HSL tab and fix two things the first thing is I want the grass to be as green as possible so we're gonna select the grass color and try to get the most greenish color that I feel like I'm comfortable with I'm gonna do the same thing with the skin tone because I like me when my skin tone a little bit more pinkish and I'm gonna add a little bit of luminance on the skin tone as well last thing I want to do is add a vignette I can use my mask to see exactly what the vignette is doing until I have something that you know I feel comfortable with so right here is good actually there's two ways you can fix your exposure you can use the exposure slider on the answer but also you can use your exposure on resolve depends on what you are doing but I, I do both depends on exactly what I'm doing or what I'm looking for I usually do both for this one I'm gonna boost the shadow just a tiny bit and perfect love it okay as I'm editing this I'm also realizing how long this video is getting so I'm just gonna fast forward however what I want you to get is the process is actually the same for all the footage that I'm grading on DaVinci Resolve using the answer. I keep the same node structure, the same node tree. First thing, I fix my color space transform. Then I go to the Deinsert node and go select DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. And from this, I do the same process. I do the same tweaks. Depends on the feeling, depends on the vibe, the emotion that I want to showcase so afterwards when i'm done doing my tweaking I, sometimes i use the exposure node i use the hsl node also i can do some masking until i have what i'm looking for exactly in a matter of a few minutes a few clicks probably depends on what i'm working on probably it might take like one one minute two minutes <laughs> What you need to get is having a tool like the answer helps you work faster. So I'm not spending as much time that I used to spend color grading my footage. I do it really quick. It's really fast. And for me, that's what matters. Being able to edit what I need to edit to color grade it really fast and deliver my projects, which gives me time to shoot more, being able to film more, making more content record more being out there more and spending less time editing behind my computer and spending more time out there if you are interested about the answer you can use the promo code jd visuals 10 to get 10 percent off click the first link in the description it's gonna lead you directly to the answers website if you want more videos like this let me know comment below and i'll see you peace